Hello and welcome back to AES NYC 2023, that is the Audio Engineering Society in New York City, with Ben from SHURE, what does that uh, stand for? I, I think it says sure oh, on it. Oh, um, sure. Are you sure? Sure uh, yeah, it does, yeah, very actually, cool. Yeah. Ben, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure, uh, We absolutely. appreciate it, we're live on, uh, on Facebook and YouTube. Sweet. Uh, so let's talk about um, what you want to talk about. Sure. Um, Sure. Uh, so we're here at AES, and uh, we have some new products to show. Um, most notably, I think people are really excited about the SM7DB. Uh -huh. So as everybody knows, the iconic SM7B has been around for a long time. Um, it's very popular with podcasting, with recording. Um, hit albums have been made on the, on the SM7. Mm -hmm. But um, I think as many of us know on the call um, that a lot of people have been using the cloud lifter. And uh -huh. you know, if you're using a preamp that doesn't have a lot of boost or you just want that extra gain, uh, you can use a cloud lifter or another booster device in line with the SM7B. Um, we took that advice back to the drawing board and actually partnered with cloud lifter uh, to offer the SM7DB. So it's everything you know and love about the SM7B, but it does have a built-in preamp boost if you need to use it. Mm -hmm. So on the back here, your same low cut and switches that we have. And then uh, we have the switchable preamp here where you can do uh, a plus 60, 18 or plus 28 dB of clean uh, boost. And uh, this has been extremely well received. The kind of like people are like, why, why didn't you do this before or whatnot? Uh -huh. and, you know, there are some that's like, I want the classic, but really under the hood, it's the exact same internals, just with a, a built-in preamp on the back end if you want to use it. So this, when we talk about a cloud lifter, this actually has cloud lifter components in it. Correct. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll say we worked with cloud lifter to, you know, get that technology inside of it. Um, it's basically like a built-in cloud uh -huh. lifter inside, uh -huh. yeah. And so, uh, you know, just to, to turn it around sure. against the, the old uh, classic. So the the switches are recessed on the on the original. Yes. Um, so you did have um, kind of your uh, you know low cut. Yeah, low cut and all and that presence stuff. Presence boost. Um, but they're now here. Yes. Uh, and e more easily accessible. Yes. Um, and then bypass and adding in the preamp. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. So of course, uh, if you are using the preamp, you hit it with a 48 volt phantom and it lights it up and makes mm -hmm. it all work. Yeah. Does it work without the 48 volt fan? I believe it does in the bypass mode. It uh -huh. kind of just takes it all out of the circuitry, it. so, so it's just the same as the as the original. So you get the classic sound. I mean, really, you get the classic output level. Yes. Um, yeah. But with the new body, and it is, it does look a little different. It's a little different. I think the they side. put a little extra uh, under the hood here because uh, of the circuitry for the mm -hmm. preamp. But other than that, same capsule, same sound quality, same specs mm -hmm. as you'd expect from. Yep. Yeah. Got it. And it's the same. And it's a slightly different finish uh, more black, oh. and this is a little bit maybe yep. dark gray. A little bit, and it's got my favorite color uh, on there, green, a little uh, bit, there so, you, go. you know, it's, yeah, perfect. Very cool, and these yeah. are available now? They are available now, they're shipping uh -huh. now. I believe uh, street or map price is $4.99 on, on the SM7. Got it, maybe. so very yeah. similar to? Very similar, uh -huh. um, if you you know do the math about buying like a cloud lifter and not having it all in one, it, it's, it's about right. Great, yeah. Yeah. awesome, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm going to check our chat, but uh, what else would you like to talk about, Ben? Well, I think um, something that kind of we don't have a lot of fanfare about is the uh, KSM-11. So, uh -huh. the uh, KSM-11 is a capsule. Um, it's our current new flag flagship. So, I know a lot of us, uh, we have what we have here is the KSM-11 uh, condenser capsule, and it's on a VPH handheld. So, mm. if you're not familiar, the VPH uh, can take any of our wireless capsules and make them wired, so we have an XLR. How it, how it works is you basically hit it with phantom power and then it will you work with any of the capsules, 58 all the way up. So um, it's a really nice tool to have in your kit. Um, additionally, like I'm using like the mic flag extender here, uh, the couple of extra collars. You could use that with a VPH as well. Um, we're just doing this to show the KSM-11 on a wired version, but you can use it wired in this fashion or wireless. Um, it's really our flagship capsule. It's pretty new, um, not like brand new at this show, but I just wanted to mention it because it's uh, becoming well received with a lot mm -hmm. of artists. We're, uh, we're getting requests for it specifically. Um, it's our cleanest, unadulterated, no coloration, designed for digital mm -hmm. type, type of sound. Mm -hmm. And uh, while it's a condenser, it has really good uh, feedback rejection, and it does pretty well with cupping or artists that cup the mic as well. So I just kind of wanted to mention it to give it a little bit more fanfare uh, in case you're not familiar with the 11. Um, I'm talking on the 8 or the KSM-8 right now, which is a dynamic cardioid. Uh, this is a condenser cardioid, so it's a little different technology. 
And for people who aren't familiar, because we do a lot, a lot of our people are using either plug-on transmitters yes. or body packs with LAVs, and then they get into handhelds and they're just like, well, what do I do? Sure. These capsules are generally compatible with a lot of other wireless manufacturers. Yes. Um, it's very, I mean, if you want to show just how Yeah, it absolutely. Comes um, on one and one off. thing about the Sure uh, ecosystem is this collar situation has been around for a long time. Uh, we don't lock anybody out, so why we want you to, of course, buy Sure, you can use other brands of capsules or whatever on this stick or with any of our wireless. Um, and they're like Legos, they're interchangeable and any of this uh, concentric circle design will work uh, with our stuff. So um, it's really nice if you're, maybe you have a wireless system and then you want to use it wired or mm -hmm. kind of share your capsules with your, your ENG kit, absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, we do get a lot of people that will buy a, you know, let's say another wireless brand because they're locked into it with the receivers. Right. But then they'll go with the short caps. Exactly. And really, like, you've got caps for everything. Everything. I mean, like, uh, you name it. Like, just about every every mic yeah. we have has a wireless version of the capsule. And yeah. they're like, like, like Legos. Um, yeah, the classic SM58, yeah. the Beta 58, the 87, it's all there. That's right. And uh, all the accessories, too, because of the concentric design, you can use, like, the mute switch or the uh, the mic flag extension. I was talking about all that stuff is is, is able to be used. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Great. Yeah. And uh, I guess so. I just want to uh, check in if there's any questions. Please leave them in the chat for Ben. One thing we've noticed is that things are generally with the uh, Axion line are generally more available now. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things are shipping uh, in stock, or if they're not in stock, it's like uh, very quickly afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we've caught up with the uh, the supply chain issues mm -hmm. and. Uh, What's more exciting is that we're always working on new and exciting things. Mm -hmm. So our engineers are able to now look at designing new next generation products and uh, stay tuned because we have a whole bunch of stuff uh, to announce uh, coming soon. Uh, not okay. at this show, but uh, I can't wait to tell you about it, the things that we're working on behind the curtain. Great, so, so yeah. hopefully uh, early next year. Early next year would probably be uh, a good time, yeah, okay. for, for that stuff. All right, stay tuned. Yeah. Perfect. Um, well, anything else you want to share, Ben? Um, the only other news, I think, is uh, we talked a little bit about WaveTool. Mm -hmm. um, WaveTool, if you're not familiar, is a, a program, uh, a Finnish company that Sure recently acquired, and it's really designed for monitoring kind of like Workbench, but more with an audio aspect. So mm. if you're at a theater or at a broadcast facility and you want to monitor the audio coming through to make sure it's good, uh, WaveTool, can you have all like those kind of monitoring that Workbench does with RF and quality, but you can actually record and you can audition the sound, um, making sure that the lavalier sounds good. You know, that's uh, number one job of an E2 on a theater production is like making sure like right off the vine it sounds good. And mm -hmm. WaveTool allows you to do that on a Mac or a computer as well as on a tablet, on an iPad. Mm -hmm. You can walk okay. around and say, does that sound okay? Does that sound okay? And uh, well, of course with theater and broadcast in mind, it can be compatible with QLab and others that can do scene switching. Mm -hmm. So whichever mics are up on the stage, will switch over and you can see how things are going and audition them and making sure that maybe a laugh sweat out or any issues like that are, are mitigated. Um, the audio recording capabilities are second to none as well. Um, and we're happy to have them as part of the Sure family. So uh, WaveTool is just uh, kind of one of the other, in addition to, not to replace Workbench, but uh, for those customers that need that auditioning and that control, WaveTool is really the way to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so there is a link in the chat to that now, just so you know. Okay. Um, so we put that in there. And I guess the last question I have is, uh, you know, when we spoke at NAB in Vegas, uh, rolling out Wireless Workbench 7, Correct. right? Correct, yeah. How is the scan database? That is great. Uh, I haven't. I don't have exact numbers on it, but uh, it's becoming more and more popular. People are uploading their scans and sharing them. Um, and it's really interesting to see the participation uh, of that. Uh, so if you are traveling in the scan library, uh, you can get the latest, greatest data and see what actually is happening there. So. Yeah, it's uh, full tilt, full steam ahead, and uh, yeah, it's working well for us. Any particular place you've noticed that you're just like, that's cool, I wouldn't expect that. Oh, I, I, I would personally find it funny, the outliers, like out in the middle of the woods somewhere where there's like one, you know, like, what are they doing out there? Maybe it's a film shoot or uh -huh. whatever, I don't know. But uh, like, what were they doing out there? You know, of course you expect the major cities, but uh, somewhere out in the in the forest or something, you're like, uh -huh. oh, okay, you know, that, right. that's amusing to me. Yeah. Very cool. All right, well look, uh, there's no questions here, so we're gonna okay. wrap it up. But Ben, thank you so much as always. My pleasure. Yeah. Great talking with you. You as well. Thank you for, uh, for watching. Uh, we'll be back in a little bit with more from AES 2023.